Shalom again, everybody. Ariel Bart Sadok here from the Kosher Torah School, found online at www.koshertorah.com. Saludos y bendiciones desde Costa Rica. Estoy aquí en Heredia hoy. <laughs> again, learn my Spanish. Slowly, slowly, shrahi, shrahi, as we say. But today I got a very important message. As you know, I started in the last couple classes to talk about the introductory material to the Sha'ari Kedusha, which is really vital as the foundational principles for performing any kind of real ascent. Now, a point that you need to understand about ascent, again, you'll see in my writings I'm talking about this as well, is the importance of what we call in Hebrew kavana. Now, kavana has been, well, just let's say, used by the Torah, the Ari, to mean all of the kavanot with the with the, the, the app, you know, um, holy names and this and that. And most people study this stuff for years and years, and they have absolutely no idea what it means to mechaven to actually do the focus, because that's really what it is. It's focus. It's the focus of your mind. And your mind will never, ever get developed Ruach HaKodesh, psychic abilities, unless you tap into the emotions. Or let me rephrase that, feelings. Kind of like, you know, when the force, feel the force flow through you kind of stuff. Well, the way to do this is actually emotional manipulation. So this class, we're going to talk about attitude adjustment. And believe it or not, Mind control. No, not mind control that others are doing to you to turn you into slaves, but rather you controlling your own mind so that you can set yourself free. Interesting, if you remember from the Tana Devei Eliyahu, uh, Rabbah 9, uh, where it speaks about everyone being able to receive Ruach HaKodesh. And they elaborated six types, Jewish, non-Jewish, men, women, and then free or slave. Now, from a economic standing today, in the Western world at least, we do not have actual slaves. So at this point in history, in this place in time, uh, we're not really worried about going to the slave market and, you know, buying slaves. This is not ancient Egypt or old uh, Western culture or other places. But Slavery is far more than an economic situation. It's a psychological one. And for the vast majority of us today, we are as much slaves today to the modern system as we were, as ancient Israel was and ancient Egypt. Slavery is of the mind long before it is of the body. You can only have a slavery of the body if you have a slavery mentality of the mind. Think about it, all right? If somebody comes, you know, with guns pointed and says, I'm taking you to the slave market, we're selling you as a slave. You have a choice of one of two things. You're either gonna fight to the death, which you very well might die, or you bow your head and you go. So that act of submission is what makes you then subject to the tortures thereof. It reminds me of a line from an old movie way back from the 1960s called Fail Safe. It was a story about an accidental nuclear bombing uh, during the days of the Cold War. It starred the old actors, Henry Fonda, Walter Matthau. And the Walter Matthau character uh, was pressing for an attack on Russia for, for, uh, for war. And they said, no, no, no. Uh, we, we, we can't be violent. And Matthau made a very curious but important comment, which I think today is very vital to understand. How long would the Holocaust have gone on if every time the Nazi went after a Jew that you met him with a gun? Now, in modern day political circumstances, that's dangerous talk, as I think we very well know. But slavery does not have to be fought today by the barrel of the gun, but it does need to have that same emphasis, that same determination, that same ability to overcome. And I'm gonna share with you now a very powerful secret of ascent 
that you're not going to find many of the other Mikubalim talking to you about. And I'm going to reveal it here in this little mini video here. I'm going to challenge a lot of you in your sacred beliefs. Now, from again, Rabbi Haim, in the introduction here to the Sha'arai Kabanot, all right, he writes like this, right? We talked about in our previous lesson, those people who went out into mental isolation, whether in their homes or whether in the deserts or in the caves. And the, well, what do you do there? You sit there and you twiddle your thumbs and you, and you wait for something to happen? No. It says here, this is what they would do. All right? Kol hayom, kol halayla, all day, all night. Tami lo yahashul halal et boram. They would not cease from praising their creator, the Esek HaTorah, in the work of Torah. Torah's work is not just reading books and memorizing facts and actuality. That is the least valuable of Torah work. Today, it's very popular. People think, oh, I'm going to read the page and I'm going to cover it, and that's learning. That's not learning at all. Indeed, even the likes of Rabbi Ovadia Yosef, who is the leading Sephardic rabbi of the 20th century, when asked with regards to the very, very famous and popular learning program today called Daf Yomi, where in which we learn an entire page front and back of Talmud uh, every day. Now, that's a lot of Talmud. If anybody's ever really studied Talmud, you don't really get a lot out of an hour's class with so much material. And Rabbi Avadi or Yosef is on record, and I've actually seen in his writings, in his Yalkut Yosef, where he discourages this traditional study of mostly Ashkenazi origins, Eastern European origins, because he says it's more important, rather than have the theoretical, you have the practical. He says it's more important than have a daf yomi, you have halacha yomi, learning the laws. Now, if you are Jewish, you obviously have the obligation, both physically and spiritually, of observing the laws and to be what we call orthodox, to observe Torah mitzvot. And no Jew, no matter how close or far, will ever be energetically balanced within the proper alignment of Klal Yisrael, of collective Israel with Hashem, unless they are fulfilling the mitzvot. It's just energetically not going to happen. Now, you can yell and scream at me, whatever you want. I don't care. You should know that by now. But I'm telling you the truth. So learning the proper form and structure is vital so that energy can flow into it. You know, it's like setting up the wires so that the energy flows through it. You know, I have the wire system, then, then it's not going to happen. All day long, these people would be working in the Torah. They weren't just reading books. They were cultivating understanding. So for those of you who actually have seen Gemara study in a yeshiva, right? You have two people learning one with one another and you're sitting back and forth and yelling, screaming, arguing back and forth because, in the words of the RE, you're cracking the nut, all right, of your ignorance. You're breaking it open by creating understanding because as you know very well, to every opinion, there's a counter opinion and then an opinion which brings them all together. Thesis, uh, antithesis, synthesis. These are the three columns of the sphere. So this is real important stuff. But we got to go beyond that. This is studying the Torah. And what else were they doing? Now, this is where it's important. Pay attention. He says here they were studying the Torah. They were reading Psalms, the songs of David. Which would bring joy to their heart. Till such a time that they would bond their thoughts with power and desire continuously into the upper holy worlds. And this is what they do all day long. Until they got to the level of this Ruach HaKodesh. And then we say, And that's how they stayed all their lives. Now, this is a very important thing. Focus, 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 focus. Where you think is where you are at. Those are the wise words of the Baal Shem Tov. The guy, remember the guy made the Aliyah? Everything revolves around the mind. So, we need an attitude adjustment about how we look and think about this world. Because, yeah, I'll be honest, living in the modern world today, 
people say to me, Rabbi, you never take time off. You never go on vacation. You never go and enjoy yourself. To which I say, these are foreign concepts to me. Um, I enjoy everything that I do. That's, that's about it. Work. Work is not my job. This is what I do 24-7. I never take time off from it and I never will. Okay. Oh, that's crazy. You're a workaholic. I don't know. Shut up with your stupid words. Don't tell me about me. All right. I'm focused in what I do. And if I've made any accomplishments in my life in my chosen path, it's because I focus on it. Just like it says here. But I'm going to tell you now a big secret about focus. Attitude adjustment. Where you think is where you are at. If you're out there, and you're out there, and you're out there, and you're not here. Because you're not here, you will never get there. Uh, I'm playing with words, but you understand my point. In order to accomplish success in the path of Aliyah, you really have to be, like we said, mental isolation, mentally focused all the time. And the way to clarity of thought is by purity of heart, attitude adjustment, and emotional stability. Now, the tradition has always been to seek out joy and gladness. And therefore, you find from the biblical examples, the Bnei Nevi'im would always be singing and dancing with music. But at the same time, if you ever met these guys like Eliyahu and Elisha, they're tough, mean sons of a gun. They weren't your loving, sweet, you know, grandfatherly, huggy type guys. They were tough. All right. What was that all about? Understand, like it says in the book of Kohelet, there's a time and a purpose for all things under heaven. There's a time for war and a time for peace. Looking at our society right now, right now, we might be in that time of war. And if that is, it's not by your hand or my hand. And to seek peace at a time of war puts you in opposition to the universe. You should not do that. Because even God is called the man of war. So recognize something about war. It also is a time for, you know, all these things. Understand now this. There's a time for love. It's a time for hate. And as the emperor in Star Wars, again, a, a, a mythology, but nonetheless an important teaching, where in which he was provoking the character of Luke Skywalker to fight Darth Vader. If you remember from the uh, original trilogy, the third one, uh, what was it called? Uh, I forgot what it was called again. Return of the Jedi, I think. And the emperor would say to him, you're hatred makes you strong and it does just remember this love and hate are two sides of the same coin when you are in full joy and power you create an energetic focus which pushes you forward to ascent and equally there is the other side not the sitar akhra bad or evil but when you hate and you have focus, determination, that also pushes you through and brings you great accomplishment. And we see this with regards to Eliyahu and Avi. We see this with regards to Elisha. We even see this with regards to Moshe Rabbeinu. So hear me now and learn and understand. Not everybody's a lovey, kissy, happy kind of guy who likes to go around singing and dancing. If that's the kind of personality that you have, fine, so be it, and do so. But just in case you're what we might call a Shorish Kayin, that's another lesson for another Kabbalah time, then you're like a Eliyahu Hanavi, like an Elisha. You're like one of these tough guys where in which you have to be mean, lean, killing machine. Then let that be your focus. Let that be your guide. Let that be your motivation, your attitude needs adjustment you think that you have to be somewhere that you're not well if you're a lovey sweetie hippie kind of guy then that's i guess what you're going to be but just in case you're of that other path don't think you have to repress it on the contrary unleash it and you will find that force and power when you visualize yud ke vav ke 
you will see that power flow through you for style. And it will make you strong. Just like the joy and gladness takes up some, the force on the other side takes up others. They are both equally valid, equally good, equally kadosh. And I encourage you, focus on it. Because in these times, it's really hard to be happy and joyful with everything going on around. So therefore, if you don't go up this column of the sphere, go up that one. That's the way people got through the Holocaust. That's the way people got through all the ancient times. Shimon Bar Yochai example, <laughs> greatest of them all, okay? This is an available path to us today and a powerful tool in our hands. So, however you choose to focus, wherever you choose, okay? This place I'm at, as you can see, is a very lovely, beautiful place. It's not my home. I'll be leaving here in a couple of days and go from this place to that place where we end up, only God knows. But wherever you end up, inside is where the path begins. Adjust your attitudes. Be honest and true in your heart. And then, as we say, cleanse your mind. right under my glasses there. Okay, cool. Let him stay. All right, what we say? We don't have any harm, wish for a fly. But for those others who are wicked and evil, remember our commandment for all of us now is Havdalah, separating the sacred from the profane. Focus your power. Ascend the column of the Sefirot. Practice the right actions. Align your heart in the proper form and ascend then into the proper mind, and you will find God there waiting for you. Ariel Bart Sadok, Kosher Torah School, koshertorah.com, bringing you what they call here in Costa Rica, Pura Veda, all right? The easy life. It's not the life of the hippie. It's the life of the honest human being. Take that with you. Benediciones, saludos, y Shabbat Shalom, because it's a Friday here for me. Talk to you all soon. Shalom.